I'm Scott, and welcome to Home Improvement Woodworking. In this bedroom remodeling project, we're going to show you how to add character and value to your home. In this first remodeling episode, what I want to do is walk you through how to replace doors on a closet like this with traditional doors mounted on hinges. What I'll be doing is putting in framing here, putting in door jams, and also mounting the doors on the hinges. The first step to taking off these doors is to disengage the doors from the track. I've just recarpeted all the rooms in this house, so I've already got this track loose. Once you disengage them, you undo the screws, and then you can pull that track out. With the doors loose at the bottom, it's just a matter of tilting out the bottom and unhooking them from the track. Now I just have to take out the screws in the top track. There, so the top's down. And now that I look at this closet, I think there's an organizing project in my future as well. I'm starting my framing on this wall as a fixed point. I know that I don't want to put any drywalling mud in here, I just want to put my trim in. So it's giving me a fixed point to work from. I need my door jam to be in here, an eighth of an inch proud of this. So my plan is to put a two by four down here and then just build it out until I've got the right depth. What I'm doing is putting a level line down the wall here so that I can mark the bottom. And then what I'll do is I'll check to make sure there won't be a twist in this frame. So when I put the doors on, they'll line up properly. I've extended the line down to the bottom, but you can see here I've got baseboard that's in the way. Part of this project is to take the baseboard off. So I'll show you how I do that. Just take a sharp knife and score the top here. I am putting in baseboard that's much taller. This is only about two and a half inches. I'm putting five inch. So I'm not really concerned with how this comes out. So I just need to score these pieces to break the caulking on the top. And then put a putty knife in here and pull it off. To make sure the door jam doesn't have a twist in it, what I'm gonna do is drive a nail in each of the corners and then do a cross with two strings to make sure that they intersect at the middle properly. I'll show you what I mean. I hook the string on the first corner here. I bring it down to the bottom corner and then loop it around several times. Then I bring it up to the top corner and loop it around so it's tight against the wall. Then I bring it across the middle and get enough length to go down to the bottom corner. And what I'm looking for is those two pieces of string just touching and that will tell me where that bottom corner should be. Now I can extend that line right to the bottom because what I need to do is cut away the carpet to allow for that new framing. So I draw the line there and then I use my square to get me three inches out on the ruler. So I've got this hole cut out here so I can get the stud sitting right on the floor. I don't want it sitting on the carpet. So I'll install this here and you can see with the trim, I still have a fair bit to build out before I get to that door jam here. But I want to take it slowly, cut out a bit at a time to make sure I don't end up with a hole around my door frame. The door jam to length and I use three quarter inch pine instead of the smaller door jam material I find it's far too flexible this solid pine here gives me more rigidity and it's easier to keep straight so with this in place I'll show you with the trim you can see I just need a little bit of shimming to get that door jam out to exactly where I need it I temporarily tack this door jam just in place here to do some measurements these are the doors that I bought they're MDF hollow core doors and I bought them based on the size that they're smaller than the opening that I've got. And that's why I'm building it out with studs. 
first of all to make sure I've got the right trim, but then I'm building it out to make sure I can fit without having to cut these doors. So what I'm going to do here is I've got a 26 inch door on either side, so it's 52 inches. I need to add an eighth of an inch for clearance here, an eighth in the middle, and an eighth here. In fact, I think I'll go just a little bit snugger so I've got a tighter seam in the middle. What this does is it allows me to measure from here over to here to figure out what framing I need in place. So I figured out I need one stud here and then the door jam. And that will get me the right size opening for these doors. I just need to figure out the height and then build the door jam, set it in place, shim it in, and I'm ready to start hanging the doors. I've now got the stud on the right hand side here and the jam is just snugly fit. So I'm bringing these doors forward so I can do some measurements. So I'm just going to jam them in place with shims. And what I need to do is determine the height of the door jam. So right now they're compressed on carpet and I need space above that carpet for the doors to swing. So I'm going to add three quarters of an inch up here and that will give me the height I need for that door jam. I'm now ready to assemble the door jams, but before I do, I want to sand them because you see these lines that go across the grain here? These are from the planer that actually left little gouges as it went along and the board was run through relatively quickly. So I want to sand those out because if I prime and paint, you'll actually see that texture with the semi-gloss paint. So I'll sand those out, get them ready, and then I'll prime the bottoms near the carpet to get them ready to install. To put the door jams together, the first thing I do is draw a square line across them. Then I pre-drill and screw in from the end. So with this door jam in place, what I need to do is shim it on either side. I have to shim it to exact point on this side so I can get my trim the way I want it. Once I've got that in place, then I can mortise the hinges and do them on the doors. Now mortising hinges is the process of carving out a section so the hinge sits flush. There's a number of different ways to do that. I'm going to show you how to do it by hand on this door jam. And then I'm going to take the doors in the shop and I'll show you a few easier ways to do it if you've got some machines. On the left hand side here, I need to shim out the jam to the appropriate length. But you see it's moving a lot here. The way I mark it is, I know I want an eighth of an inch width on that reveal. So I just measure out from a shim an eighth of an inch. And then I've got a mark that I can use as my guide to how far out that should be showing. I'll show you how to properly shim a door jam. What you need to do is make sure the shims are overlapping. What that ensures is that they're parallel. If you end up shimming one shim, you'll end up twisting the door jam. So they need to overlap and the more you push them together, the bigger gap it creates behind the door jam. The opposite happens this way. You get a small one. So what I do is I just guess at where this might be and insert them so I know that they're overlapping. And then I'll take my piece of trim and line it up to my line to see how it's lining up. So I need to take these out a little bit. And there, I'm lined up on the line, exactly where I need to be. Now we'll attach the door jam with a nail right through both shims. The last step is to take a sharp knife and run it down the seam here. and then you can break it off. I've got this door jam fully shimmed now. And what I've done is made sure it's plumb this way and this way. If it's at a plumb on the front and it's leaning out, that door is gonna to wanna to swing open. So it's important to make sure that this is plumb. The other part is I've got the right spacing here that when I put my trim in, I'll be able to get uh, no seam here in the corner so it's nice and tight. So with this fixed, I now need to shim that side. But what I need to do before that is I want to put these doors in place because this swinging in and out will help me line up these doors and get them true. So I'm going to shim that at the very end once I get the doors mounted. To mortise hinges, the first thing you need to do is locate where they need to be. So I'm measuring seven inches down here, the same height as the other hinges in this room, and I've got the hinge pin at the top. 
I then need to mark the depth, and these are three inch hinges. So the depth that I need is one and one eighth. So I've taken my combination square here and set it, and I just draw a pencil line there. So with that in place, I can now line this up on those lines and then mark the holes with a sharp pencil. Now I drill pilot holes dead center in those holes. Then I put the hinge in place with the screws. Now with a very sharp knife, what I do is I go around the outside and mark where I need to mortise. So I'll score this several times to give me a starting point for my chisel to rest in. The trick to this is having a really sharp chisel. You can see the reflection there in the end. If you're working with a dull chisel, this will be very difficult. I set the chisel in the knife line. Now they've gone all the way around, what I'll do at the top end and bottom end is just use my chisel to get that end chip taken out. Then the next step is to cut all the way up in several different passes, just scoring the fibers. I hold up the hinge here just to eyeball the depth that I need for the cut, and then what I'll do is pare away the waste. And you can see why a sharp chisel is so important. Then I do a test fit and then clean it up a little bit more just to get it flush. With the hinges installed in the door jam, I can now move on to transferring the marks to the doors. I do that by shimming them in place and getting the right height. Once I've got the right height, then I can transfer the marks so I can mortise the doors. Here in the shop, I've put a straight cutting bit in my router and I've set the depth the same as the hinge. This is a quicker way to clean out the mortise, but it does take a little bit of tool setup. If you're doing a lot of doors, you can use a setup like this with a guide bearing bit and you can use a template. So if you're doing six or more doors, it probably makes sense to spend $50 on a template. When I use a rotor, I still do the same process of mounting the hinge and marking it with a knife, so I've got a nice clean edge to work to. Quick cleanup with a chisel and I'll be good to go. 
with these hinges now more just in the door so I can hang them. And I've got one in already. And this side, what I do is just set the bottom hinge in place. And then the top hinge, I put the pin in. That carries the load. That's just a matter of lining up the bottom and dropping the pin in. Okay. So I've got a small gap here and a big gap here. Small gap here and a big gap there. So what I need to do is bring this door this way. I haven't shimmed this door jam yet. So I'm going to shim that now and it should even out these gaps all the way around the door. I finished shimming up the door jam so I've got a nice even gap all the way around the door and a good seam in the middle. I've still got some door stop to put in and that's to prevent the doors from pushing in further than they're supposed to, but that'll be just a few minutes. Inside here I want to show you what my next project is. So on tap here I've got a project to organize this closet. It wasn't well used space before and I know we can maximize the space. Click on the subscribe button and click on the bell, you'll get notified when our next episodes come out. Until next time, enjoy your time in the workshop.